My name is Chris Melns, and I'm the inventor and owner of a thing called the Square Helper. And I use MakerBots to print them and get them ready to retail. I print one, comes right off the platter. Sometimes there's a little wisp of plastic. Uh, I use an iPad at my restaurant. And when I swipe credit cards with the iPad, there's a thing called the Square cr Credit Card Reader, and it spins freely. So uh, it works, but it's kind of unwieldy and stuff. So I needed like a little piece of plastic that would hold it in place. So I made a prototype with some friends, and then I had the, the problem of manufacture. China it was the cheapest option. Uh, I find out that to make molds would cost about $4,500 to $6,000, and they wanted to charge uh, 30 cents for each piece. At the very same moment, MakerBot came out with this newest model called the Replicator 2. I said, mold is $6,000, and they want to charge 30 cents per piece. This is $2,000, and I figured out what the plastic cost, and it's 5 cents a piece. So normally there's a pro and a con to a decision-making process. In this case, it was a pro and a pro. So I got my first machine, and then I ran it into the ground more than 20 hours a day running pieces for, uh, for about three months before I bought more machines. Each machine will print about 100 pieces per day and I run it every day. Uh, desktop 3D printers make the process of innovating and coming up with ideas uh, much faster, uh, much more affordable. So 3D printers have been around about 30 years and there are more people who now have desktop 3D printers than had heard of it in its first decade. This is bringing a lot of people into the process of making physical things uh, than would have been possible before. The, the notion that desktop 3D printing is coming in and it's shaking down factories and that factories are like, oh no, we're, we're not going to have factories next month. That's not true. There's room for a lot. There's a room for uh, desktop 3D printing in the same landscape as the industrial tools. When I started this whole deal, I, I knew some things. I knew that it would cost $2,000 to buy a machine, and I knew it would cost five cents for each piece of plastic. I did a little research. There is no iPhone or iPad accessory that touches an iPhone that is less than $9.99. So I priced mine at $7.99 and it flies. Five months into this whole thing, I've sold uh, more than a thousand pieces uh, without a problem, so that's $8,000. It's paid for a few machines and I'm a happy camper.